Hello, welcome back. It's all about the rules today. All about the rules, or is it the rules, or is it about magic? Yes, we're going to talk about magic. Uh, you can see in front of you, I have a lot of resource books that I'm going to be using and pulling from, from 5e to 4e to 3.5 to second ed edition to first ed edition. Uh, you can see a lot of players' handbooks here. And it's quite deliberate on my part. Um, I could have gone with, let's do a specific rule set, but actually I'm going to give it another month and I want to keep going a bit more abstract for now with the topics in terms of the rules and then we'll maybe start honing in and looking at specific rule sets. That gives me time to sort of learn stuff. How's it going, um, Jerry? How are you? And how are you doing, um, Fred Hubber? So uh, I'm going to put up a poll. <laughs> I'm quite deliberately asking this question. Okay, so if you're looking at this and think, is Fred trying to stir the pot? Yeah, I would say it's reasonable to assess that this is Fred stirring the pot with the question. <clears throat> so grab some food, some drink, get comfortable. This is a really very much a behind the scenes sort of uh, live stream rather than a presentation at this time. It will become a full blown presentation with demonstrations with maps and dice and miniatures and all that sort of thing but that's not really the intention for today the intention today is to s simply show you everything that I have behind the scenes the last time we did this was about a month ago and uh, we're going to continue on that path and hopefully today we will finish it because I do have pretty much all the resources that I need and I feel like we were very close to finishing anyway so yeah I will have a drink of water and we'll uh, rock on into this <clears throat> Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Weller, and today I'm going to talk about magic. And when I say RPG, I mean uh, role-playing games rather than rocket-propelled launches. Uh, this joke is not getting old on me. You just need to tell me when I stop, when to stop actually putting that forward. You know, th there's a point where it's probably getting old. I, I I totally get it. So today is all about me going through the process of showing you what I have. I have a Google slide, which we're not going to be doing very much with today, I suspect. And then I have a, a Google document where I have been putting together sort of all of the kind of game rules and concepts around magic specifically for today into a Google document. And it's kind of, it is definitely looking a lot at Dungeons and Dragons, but I have played other, um, uh, other types of uh, uh, role playing games, so I can pull from other systems if I wanted to. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to put that in. And I, I, I welcome you sharing some of your experience around magic, and other role-playing games. There are a lot of uh, spells that did not make it from second ed edition to five e. Uh, you're absolutely right, and and it's probably deliberate because one, the book could only house so much material before they would run out of space. But also, like Wizards of the Coast always seems to make stuff in a way to deliberately force you to buy supplements later on, which they print not necessarily in a, a form that you want. Um, it's, it's an odd, well, no, we know what it is. It's a marketing thing. Okay, so let's get straight into the, the crux of things. Let's get straight into the business of uh, getting things moving. Okay, this is that one. Uh, I don't want that there. I need to have my phone up so I can check, check the chat as I go. How's it going, Fred? How are you? I hope that you are doing well. And this is telling me I apparently I am I'm live. Oh, that's nice. Okay, get rid of that and pull that up. Uh, so, so for every for everything that I sort of come across where I want to build it out, I'm going to definitely refer to each of the books. So because there are five books in front of me, it may take a little, just a little bit of time. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, but in any case, let's, uh, let's show you what I've got done so far. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll proceed to uh, start expanding. So I'll be trying to be quick with this, this bit here. So there will be a, I guess I will present at least the stuff that I've done in the past. And for those of you who are looking for more, well, hopefully that's all, that'll happen today. Um, okay, so this is what we have so far. This is my Google slide. This is what I have been working on. Um, 
changing the image, changing sort of the focus, trying to make it more agnostic. Um, overview, the overview is, is all right, but there are certainly aspects that I know I'm going to have to add in here. And I haven't really talked about them that much. So uh, right now, the concept of a mana pull. Mana pull. Uh, they can be represented by dice pulls, but a mana pull is sort of like you have certain certain amount of mana, and with that mana you can cast your spells. That's something I want to interject in here at some point. We'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm, I'm still wondering how that's going to work. My phone is struggling apparently, but uh, well, who knows. Sunspot. Next. Objectives. We don't need to worry too much about that. That's just a, a placeholder. Spells. We kind of went over the bits and pieces around spells. I pretty much think we finished that. That's done. Rituals. I still haven't nailed down how I want to do this because of, frankly, the problem with rituals and and putting putting this, nailing this down is 5e is the problem. Okay, rituals and five is the problem. So um, I don't know whether I want to completely remove it or I want to sort of expand out, expand it out a bit. Uh, casting time was nice and simple. It kind of applies to any system. Uh, component spells, duration of spells, not a really an issue. Concentration, I hate concentration in 5e. Uh, I know we used to have some sort of way of disrupting it. There's, there's always one, you know, people want that aspect you can disrupt magic which is, is cool, it's fine, um, but we kind of, we dealt with most of that, so that's good. Concentration mechanics, I had left that, I wasn't too sure what to do with this. That's why it's, it's in yellow. And then types of magic, again, <clears throat> these are the schools of magic from D&D, &D, and, and I actually wanted to go a bit further and, and kind of beyond this, and we, we I haven't really done that here. Uh, the, the area of a spell and its effect, this is actually... Um, Wizards of the Coast property. I haven't really found something to replace this with, but they 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 kind of duplicate all of the sorts of concepts behind spell casting area. That sort of represents that casting a spell. We've got that down, and then miscellaneous. So there is a couple of slides that need to go in here for, for sure. And um, so I'm going to probably go uh, copy. And uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time in the slide section today. We're actually going to go to the meat and potatoes. Um, I'm going to put that slide there. Uh, you'll, you'll understand more once I get there. You get an echo from your phone. No echo from my end. Well, there shouldn't be an echo. I've got nothing on that would suggest that there's an echo. If anybody else is getting an echo during the live stream, please let me know. Okay, it, I don't have anything that should be picking it up because I don't have my headphones in. It's just the microphone that should be doing the work. I will check OBS, but I'm pretty sure it's just, it should only be picking up. The only thing it's picking up is the Yeti microphone. So there shouldn't be any, uh, any problems. Okay, all right. Anyway. <clears throat> I would move ritual to only spells not useful in combat. Um, the ritual version of casting. Yeah, so I did actually state in the ritual section that rituals aren't really combat spells. Like if you're casting a spell as a ritual, they take a long time to cast. They're not really combat. I don't want to take them out, take rituals out. I just want to mention where they, they kind of make, make the most sense. Okay, so let's go to the Google document. This is, this is more useful to you. So this is what I had last time. And if anything sort of sounds sort of a bit out of whack or I've missed anything, you let me know. I'm going to have to put a lozenger in my mouth because I'm not going to cope. Um, so yeah, just so you understand, okay, I, I do have, I do have, um, I do, can you even see what I'm showing you? Let me just do this just quickly and then we'll go back. Okay, so I do have... Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the Player's Handbook for 2nd Ed Edition. And of course, I do have the modern one, which is the Player's Handbook for 5e. Okay, so that's 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 on me. Um, I don't have the Pathfinder, but because Pathfinder is so clearly a reproduction of 3.5, I don't think it really matters that much. This is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the Player's Handbook for 1st Ed Edition. I'm kind of curious to see what each one of them says. 
this don't freak out this is 4e this is the player's handbook for 4e and of course i have here this is uh third edition um dungeons and dragons or 3.5 should i say since so I, I didn't really play third edition third ed edition i played 3.5 which was just a it was only slightly different there wasn't that much of a difference <clears throat> um echo i meant uh, i found it okay second post about echo meant i uh, all right okay all right cool cool all right so we're good so let's get back to to the the job at hand which is this um so magic is the power of influencing inve events by using mysterious or supernatural forces so i thought that was the probably the best way of describing it is you're influencing events and I, I don't know if we need to expand that into something else. Um, I could say influencing events or creatures, I suppose. That sort of covers the sort of the, the world and then um, beings. And creatures. Okay, magic can uh, include the following concepts, and this is why I wanted to make this more generic. Traditional magic, so whatever you think is traditional magic. Psionic powers, which is considered to be slightly different from magic. Psionic powers are sort of coming from the mind, right? Um, godly powers, I put that in because I think we actually, somebody had mentioned putting it in. Um, psychic powers, psionics and psychic, they are very closely related, absolutely. Um, elemental forces this is an aspect that I thought was um, I wanted to add in here high machine technology so often science is sort of reviewed as being magic by a, a you know a more primitive or less experienced life form right and then biological technology because we had the machine side and then you've got the biology side of things and then the force from Star Wars I thought we had to include that because don't get don't get upset with me. I, I, I love Star Wars, but uh, the Force is in many respects uh, a duplication of the spirit, in some res in some respects, but also magic. The concept that spirit and magic can overcome in Star Wars technology is a big sort of theme, right? So, so I've got that. That's what we 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 built out as our what what we were trying to I was trying to do with this. So it gives you an idea. I'm not trying to just do 5e or Dungeons and Dragons magic. <clears throat> and uh, for the life of me, I'm not getting this lozenger into my mouth. I need to. So spell level. So spell level indicates the power of the magic being created and how difficult it is to cast. So power and difficulty. Um, spell ranges from 0 to 10, plus in power. Now, the reason I've put 0 to 10 is in D&D, there used to be 10th level spells. And we know that cantrips are zero level spells. And if you look at other game systems, they often have a range that is as you know, is, is, you know, is low as zero right up to ten. Uh, there might be some variation on that for sure. Obviously it depends on the role playing game. Character level doesn't necessarily correspond to spell level. Um, I don't know, how, how does this, how have I word this? Character level doesn't necessarily correspond to to the spell level a character class can cast. Okay, <clears throat> and that tends to be the case with a lot of systems. Like you don't necessarily cast a spell at your character level. So if your character level two doesn't mean you cast a level two spell. So, hi Brian, how are you? Brian Burton. I'm happy I get to see you live for the first time, is it Brian? Well, great, I'm glad you're here. I want to thank you for all of your hard work and time. You're welcome, Brian. No a problem. I um. <clears throat> all I keep thinking about is how can I make something that will last. And this is sort of where my head is at. So, simple spells or cantrips. I mean, I, I looked up the, the definition of a cantrip. And this is what I put into this um, aspect of it. Is I specifically pulled out. The bits and the definition of a cantrip not from what wizards of the coast put out but what the dictionary put out much to my surprise it's a simple spell cantrip it's zero level spell um these are very low level magical spells and um they're sort of 
they are trifling magical tricks. <clears throat> That's all that a cantrip or simple magic is supposed to be. It's trifling magic. It's very, very simple, basic stuff. Uh, cantrips can be cast an infinite number of times a day without using up mana, energy, or spell slots. So <clears throat> I thought that was probably a, a good idea to in, impart in here. Um, and it kind of rings true for most things. You don't have to prepare a cantrip in a spellcaster's mind because they have practiced it more often than any other spell, which I kind of like. One of the things um, I know some people dislike is the concept of the cantrip. I actually like the cantrip a lot. <clears throat> as long as they don't get too silly with it. If they get silly, then it's a problem. Cantrips are very... Um, are, are very the least... Are the are the least powered, most least powerful, least powerful, least powerful. Sorry, cantrips are the least powerful magic that often consist of utility effects, but may include small destructive magic. So that's kind of your cantrip tied up. Now here is the ritual. Now, I, I could come back to the ritual. I don't want to do too much with the ritual because that's where our, our work is going to go into today. What do you got here, Brian? Your views and opinions on the Curse of Strahd are so helpful to me. Well, I'm glad they have been helpful, Brian. I know I haven't done a lot on the Curse of Strahd and very likely will not do it again, but um, I can I can point you in the direction of some very good people at uh, providing advice. And Lunch Break Heroes, very, very... I mean, he's built his whole career around making stuff for the Curse of Strata supplements, Lunch Break Hero. And then, of course, there's Jordan from Flute Sloot, who's been doing a lot recently, too. And he's run he's run Curse of Strahd many times, um, at least uh, two or three, three times, I think he said. And, um, <clears throat> I mean, I feel like Curse of Strahd is uh, the experience of running Ravenloft, the original one, gives you a better perspective. And I've actually run the Ravenloft one. You can kind of see what's going on between the two then. <clears throat> okay, so here. Now, Fred, what do you got here? When cantrips, cantrips first appeared in D&D, they used one quarter of one first level slot. Ah, interesting. Hello, Spirit Wolf. How are you? <clears throat> well, we're going to go, we're going to, we can, we can kind of port back to that, but I'm, at this present time, I'm, I'm just... <clears throat> oh, I see why you've mentioned this, Fred. Now, so I apologise, Fred. Now I understand why you've mentioned that. I just it just occurred to me why you've mentioned it. Um, cantrips can be cast an infinite number of times per day without using up mana, energy, or spell slots. That's what you were trying to communicate here. In, in some cases, um. The cantrip may only use up um, partial, uh, partial, par, partial units of mana energy or spell slots now um, sometimes so cantrips sometimes can be cast an, an infinite number of times a day Without using up mana, energy, or spell slots. Okay. In some cases, the cantrip may only use up partial units of mana, energy, or spell slots. Depending on the roll system. <clears throat> I think that's what you were trying to get at, Fred. <coughs> uh, okay. Okay. Well, I, I actually, 
the, the, see, this is one of my things, um, Fred. I kind of think that was actually a good move. I, I, I honestly think the the addition of a cantrip is doing damage was probably was unnecessary. And the scaling cantrip again, but then that's that. I mean, I play characters and spellcasters more than anything else. Anything, even de- even as a dungeon master or a game master, played wizards, sorcerers, and so forth a lot more. So <clears throat> it's not that I don't like to have that power. I just feel like it's it's kind of too much. The only reason to to do it is so that you don't have to fire a bow all the time, which is what you used to wind up doing. Okay, ritual. A ritual spell is a ceremony consisting of a series of actions performed according to a prescribed order. So that's what I looked up. That's the definition, basically, off, off the internet. Some spells can be cast as a ritual, as they as they are a special type of magic. So it's not like all of them can be. Okay, so some spells can be cast as a ritual as they are special types of magic, but not all. spells usually you don't have an open uh, uh, usually it's not an open gate to any spell usually there are some tags involved no matter what you're playing the ritual version of a spell takes longer to cast than normal which means they aren't appropriate to use when under threat in a battle which is what your point was Fred um <clears throat> So what I'm going to do here is rituals don't expend a spell slot in Dungeons and Dragons 5e. Since that's the most, the newest version of the game, I'll, I will leave that line in. Um, none. So we'll leave it. Uh, the ritual version of a spell might well have restrictions, and often there are, like you can only cast them at the lowest level, or there are some of the restrictions required. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the rest of this because I, these I want to sort of mush through a bit more. Casting time. <clears throat> um, yeah, sometimes it's an improvement, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's personal taste. I mean, I think the, the thing that gets changed the most out of anything is definitely the rules around magic. <laughs> okay, so casting time. Casting time is how long a spell takes to create, so that's nice and obvious. Casting time is broken up into four categories. Action, the uh, the normal act of a character on their turn in the game casting a spell. Your extra action, swift action, minor action, half action, bonus action, God, we went over this, didn't we, are short periods of time that allow a smaller magical effect to be created on the character's turn. Okay, interrupt actions. Reactions and disruption of a magic that generates a magical and the disruption of a spell that generates a magical effect might also be possible in a role playing game. So this was really to to highlight the interrupt concept. Interrupt reactions and and the disruption. Okay, so I think I did I word that correctly? Interrupt actions, reactions and disruption actions and the and sorry I didn't word this correctly and disruption actions that use a spell a spell that generates a magical effect might also be possible in a role-playing game. So <clears throat> there's always the, de- the the desire between for the interrupt action, the reaction, the disruption action, is spell dueling. Like you, you have wizards or sorcerers or magic users fighting each other, and this is why we have it there. This is why so- Silvery Barbs was created for Five E. The problem is, it really it's it's such it it really makes no sense outside of playing a campaign where everybody's a wizard or a sorcerer or a magic user of some kind. Because it's really about, <clears throat> the game is now about um, spell dueling. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> Next, ah, uh, God, my throat's so bad. Uh, longer casting times could be 
anything from a character turn, a game round, minutes, hours, days, or years. So imagine a year just casting a spell. <clears throat> All right, components to spell. To spells, uh, components to spells are the physical requirements a spellcaster must meet in order to cast the spell selected. Not all spells have these requirements. They might only require one of them or none of them. So verbal is the chant of mystical, wor mystical words to form the spell or magic. Body movement or somatic are the spell casting gestures to manipulate the magic into existence and might require at least one free hand to perform. So in 5e you need to have a free hand to do this. In other systems you, you may or may not. It depends on what sort of magic we're dealing with. <clears throat> Materials are the practical um, objects from a component pouch or a spell casting focus that assist in binding the magic in the physical world and might require at least one free hand to perform. So I've left that very open quite deliberately. Durations of spells. What have we got here? You put in something else here, Fred. What have you got here? Generally ignored in early D&D spells had casting times and segments, which uh, were fractions of a combat round. And the caster initiated the spell on their turn, and if not interrupted, it went off later. Yeah, I, d I do remember something like that. It was a pain in the butt. <laughs> it really was. It's definitely a pain in the butt. Okay. Okay, so um, duration of spells. A spell duration is the length of time the spell effect persists. A spell duration can be a few turns, rounds, minutes, days, hours, days, and years. Okay. A turn in a... Now, huh, a turn is the game master or player's time to act in the game before moving to another person's turn. So, we, I, I think we stipulated the turn because... That was the one thing out of everything, as well as possibly the round, defining the round, that weren't self-explanatory. We know what a minute is, we know what a an hour is, days, and so forth. I probably can, in fact, add seconds. People don't need that explained to them. Turns, rounds, different. Seconds, minutes, hours, days, and years, everybody knows this. Okay, uh, when every, everyone has taken their turn, this represents the game round. So we've defined those two things. That's That was what I was trying to do there. Okay, instantaneous spells are where the magical effect exists only for an instant. So it should be, it should be obvious, but I, I have spelled it out. Concentration spells require that a spellcaster focus on the spell for the duration of the effect. Dura um, on the spell for the duration, the effect can exist. These spells can be interrupted or disrupted while the magical effect is persisting. So, that's your concentration <clears throat> aspect of a spell. Not all spells work this way, not all systems use this. But like I said, if you're having a disruption aspect to your game, you would have that there. Okay. Let's go down and have a look at this. Um... Uh, disrupting spells and concentration. A spellcaster might res um, might have restrictions on concentrating on a spell. Spell concentration might end for a few reasons, including but not limited to interference, disruption, distractions, injuries, limitations, constraints, and death. Okay, so I think we covered all of our bases as to why something might end. Not necessarily for 5e, but for anything that you are playing. A game master may um, can require a dice Roll test to deter to maintain concentration if if environmental phenomena would distract a spellcaster. So <clears throat> there is another aspect to this that I have not put in here that I probably do need to put in here, and I, and that is not just the environment. Environmental phenomena sort of represents something outside of um, creatures and animals, correct? But we ha I haven't got something here that falls into that. If the spellcaster takes damage while concentrating on a spell, the magic user might also need to maintain concentration or the spell ends. So, I'm going to actually expand this. Or, so a game master can require a, di um, a dice roll test to maintain concentration if the phenomena, if, if environmental phenomena or creatures 
uh, distract the caster. Spell caster. Um, Okay, so if you know, all the all characters would distract a spellcaster. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, so we'll add in the <clears throat> we'll add in the uh, the organism aspect of this as well. That's I think that's that works fine. Now my my biggest problem with trying to decide whether I wanted to keep concentration as a constitution saving throw for the 5e game is do I really want to be that specific to it is there is there value in leaving it there people uh, you don't have to answer that question right now I'll come back to that and think about it a bit more it's either leave it there or not leave it there and so it's an easy fix and, and not going to take me a lot of time okay types of magic so <clears throat> I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to spend a lot more time on this. So I had mentioned um, elemental magic such as air, fire, water, earth, and spirits because often when you have elemental stuff, the spirit comes in, in, into play as well. Magic mana, energy pulls, or dice um, is another way of sort of representing the types of magic. And I I don't know if anybody can think of anything else, but then we had the broken um, the spells or sorry I say magic. Spells are now broken down into schools of magic. This is this is a very D and D concept, but when you look at when I looked at all of these um, words, they all tended to fall into that was that. It's not like they are something you could essentially copyright. Now the reason being is because they are definitions that essentially exist in the dictionary. <clears throat> um, so we'll come back to that. <coughs> We're going to work on that one for today, for sure. And then, um, <clears throat> oh man, is this because I, I talk too much? Uh, what do you got here, Fred? Imagine a fifth, um, uh, a fifth level wizard with one third level spell casts Fireball, which takes X segments to cast the next enemy. Um, hot, what is it? Shoots, shoots the. The wizard and the and the spell is blown. We had that in AD and D. So we did that in three point five. What you would do is <clears throat> you would ready or prepare to cast. Uh, usually it was um, magic missile at somebody, and it would be the, the spell caster. And so you would force them to and try you try to disrupt their magic when they try to cast something, rather than hitting them with magic missile straight away and just doing damage. Instead, the idea was to stop them using their magic. Um, and so in 3.5, that was very much a possibility. It is still a possibility now, uh, frankly. You could still do it now. And the nice bit about it is, um, if you're playing a modern version like 5e and so forth, you probably can enforce them to if, if they uh, to disrupt that magic more, more often. But the only ones you're really able to disrupt nowadays are concentration spells not all spells because in the past you could disrupt any spell that was being cast so all right effect okay area of effect for spells or magic let's put that okay determine the space that okay so the areas of effect for a spell determine the space they magically change and what creatures might be caught in the effect so the areas of effect are line cone cube sphere and cylinder and actually that's not true because there's more um we've got most shapes that are that consists and affect you in 5e but there is there is room for something else, um, and I, I the problem the problem is that I don't think it's definable. So I'm going to leave it as is. I think I'll leave that as is. Okay, casting a spell. So this really goes down to saving throw spells, attack roll spells. Some are close quarter, some are at range. This is all for very much five e stuff here. I'm. 
I've highlighted it, but I feel like I'm probably just going to keep it. Um, and it, I know it doesn't fall into the completely system agnostic. I, I totally agree. But if somebody's got some suggestions, this is just as easy as I make it make it a thing and just unhighlight it and it's done. Okay, and then we have here miscellaneous recommendations. So, and we don't need to worry about the other stuff here. So my miscellaneous recommendations were as follows. Uh, now what what is this here? Oh, this is this is we don't need to worry about that. So yeah. So this is um, just push this down. <clears throat> okay, so spell casting is complex, so it's all right to make mistakes. So, so I'll put that down. Known spells, prepared spells, and spell slots are not necessarily the same thing. Spell level is not necessarily equal to a character's class level. Read the spells carefully and um, and don't and what and note down. I put not down. Note down page numbers for quick reference. So those are my, my miscellaneous recommendations. Now before we, we head into this, and we've, we don't actually have a huge amount to work with today, which is good news, um, I had posed you a question in, in, as, a, as a poll. And so I, I actually want to go back to that poll and uh, see how people responded. Um, and I'll then tell you what my opinion is of Van Seen Magic. Because <laughs> Van Seen Magic is very much a creation. Um, well, the, it wasn't, say, a creation, but it was ported over by Gary Gygax into Dungeons & Dragons, right? It's what we are, we are very familiar with if you played the game. If you played different games, you'd be familiar with something else. So let's have a look at what people had to say in the comment section. I can't check it on my phone, unfortunately, so I have to use the desktop computer for that. And let's have a look. Um, what the heck is going on there? All right, okay, that's fine. We're good. <laughs> uh, so the poll says, so I've got 10 votes here, and I asked the question, do you like Van Seen Magic in your role-playing games? Now, 40% of those 10 people said yes. I mean, that's only 10 people. I totally get it. Um, so 36% said yes. 36% said yes. Undecided, 27%. Just watching, 36%. So those 36% don't want to really say anything, which is fine. My personal view of Van Seen Magic is I don't like Van Seen Magic. Not because I don't, my rationale for not liking Van Seen Magic isn't because I want spellcasters to be more powerful than the martial classes, although that tends to be what's the case because magic changes the very nature of reality, right? And that's not something you can usually do if you are a martial class, unless of course you're like a gish and you're a mixture of magic and fighting. Um, so... The more and more I look at this, the more and more I, f I almost feel like um, there's got to be a better way. One of my, my, bit, my pet peeves with Van Seen Magic is not the fact that you have to, that Van Seen Magic is a thing, but tracking of Van Seen Magic. It, it's, just the, it's just the paperwork around Van Seen Magic. Um, not necessarily for myself. I mean, I, I've been playing the game a while. It's... If anything, it's my frustration at watching other people get frustrated with Van Seen Magic, which is why I dislike Van Seen Magic. This is why I like cantrips, but yeah, that's really beside the point. That's not what this is all about. So Fred, what do you got here? Before the published spell cards, I copied the spells from the book onto a 3x5 card so I could have the spells memorized, easy to, to reference. Yeah, it's, it's a smart thing to do, and if you're able to do so, absolutely do that. Okay, so let's get back to the homework. We we had got to a point, and I am I am of the opinion um, that I probably need to create two new slides, two new slides before I go anywhere. And um, I guess my reason for doing that is I don't know how else to 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 put it together in such a way that it's going to be easy to understand. So, 
and uh, yeah, I could easily make this way too difficult. So I, I'm I'm a little, I'm concerned about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two extra slides, and I'm going to put the two extra slides at the end of this presentation. And the reason for doing that, I think, is ultimately to to ensure that what you're getting is what you need to have. So what I will do is. Components, categories, da da da, types of magic. Um, will I just copy and paste this this slide? Maybe I can. I think ultimately in the end, I think we're going to unhighlight this. I don't know how people feel about it, but I'm just going to unhighlight it. Because I th I'm pretty sure I went through each one of these, and I can actually unhighlight it later, can't I? So it doesn't matter. It doesn't honestly matter. So I'll just I'll copy this. I'll put a new slide in here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the slides, by the way, people. Paste. We'll get rid of the image. I'll put something else in there. We don't need that. I'm just going to take out the highlight on that. Uh, can it transparent? Yeah, cool. And I'm going to put here... I had, put, I had put it down, but I want to put down mana, pulls, and dice. Um, now I haven't seen mana pulls and dice used in that many role playing games, but they do exist. And you're probably very familiar with mana if you've played video games. Yeah, you probably you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, let's just do that, and we'll just go mana pulls. mana dice okay so that's what I wanted to put in here just so I I, I covered that because I haven't really got that right now and I think we need to have that there let's just put a, a copy transfer over into here paste and shrink that down make that a little bit it doesn't really need to matter too much because it's just a placeholder and then um, I'll do the same thing and make a copy of this. But there's another one, and I didn't really go into a lot of detail on it before, but I, I will. And we'll paste this. And instead of calling it this, it's actually Elemental Magic. So if you if you if you know anything about the um, the last Airbender, you know um, Avatar, you'll you'll be familiar with this sort of thing. Elemental magic. And so for this one, some keywords, and the keywords would be um, elemental magic. Um, and then we go air, fire, whoops. Water, Earth, Spirit. Okay, all right. Um, and of course, I'll fill that out a little bit more. But that's those are those two slides that I really felt like needed to be there, and I'll put them near the end. Uh, all right. So, so that means before we go into rituals. I'm going to pull from right here um, types of um, schools of magic. Okay, types of magic school. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We'll take this one, we'll cut it, we'll put it way the heck down here past all of this so it winds up being the last slide. Yeah, that's right, that's where it needed to be. Go down, okay, and another space maybe, it'll help, okay, so, paste, and we put elemental magic, because that's what I want, elemental magic, 
come on. And I wanted to break this up into a couple of headers. So we'll do this. Um, yeah. Fire, water, earth, and spirit. Okay. I'll do that. So this is something to fill out. Shouldn't take too long to do that. That should be fine. And then uh, what was the other one? That was the last one. Oh, mana pulse. That's right. Almost forgot it. Uh, mana, pulls and dice. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, who have we got here? Um, so, so 5e has gone much more lenient than original Van Scene. Yes, I'm aware. Cantrips especially that do damage. Upcasting, yes. We are closer to mana system, but not quite there. Yeah, I, I agree, definitely. Mana systems work really well on a computer RPG. Not really, really role play, in my opinion. Um, I feel like it can. It's just, I don't think the way they do it works. It, it's... It's too much of a, a mix of too many things going on, but that's personal preference, because real time clocking is a an easily tracked by is easily tracked by a computer. Fair enough. Not so easy to track the style on a person at a game table, uh, where time does not pass in, in in the game. Same as a player. Yeah, I agree. So no, um, so P, uh, so is it P three? Is it patch? P3 rich, P3 rich. No, what I'm doing is I'm trying to put pull together the different concepts of magic in different role playing games. Um, that's really what I, my my head is at. This is this is what this is all about, and that would just be the presentation side. And when that's done, I would then show somebody a magic system from a, a particular role playing game, which will be something I do in the future. Okay. Anyway, so let's let me get this down. Mana pulls. Oops, mana pulls, and that is probably not how I want it to look. So we'll get rid of this. That's better. And we will uh, give it a number. And there's mana dice. Okay, those are the two concepts that I wanted to fill out, and I will highlight them. Um, actually, maybe we should just highlight, maybe we should go over them first. Now that I think about it, let's get rid of this. That doesn't belong there anymore. Okay. Uh, so the, hang on. Okay, this is taken from Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, but again, like I said, uh, the, the actual descriptions of those words are exactly, exactly what the dictionary says. So, yeah. That didn't work. That did. Okay, so we're going to keep it as, as is. That's fine. So that's sort of, that's nailed that one down. We're keeping it as it is, as is. It's one concept that people would be looking for. It's a very common idea. So we we leave it untouched and unchanged and unmessed with. So that is one one down. Good news. Yeah, exactly, Fred. I'm doing more of an overview of how magic works in assorted game style um systems. Exactly. Yeah, I I would too. The the mana pull would be. <laughs> The mana pull would be a, w a good way to go, but there's also the mishaps. You know, you, if you can cast a spell as many times as you like, but every time you cast a spell, there's a chance of a mishap. The more spells you cast, the more dangerous it becomes, basically, particularly if the mishap is a real mishap, where you can blow yourself up, um, or you can hurt yourself, or something like that. So it becomes a bit more interesting. Uh, magic becomes dangerous. 
So I'm I'm not gonna mess with this. I actually think that's we can probably leave this. Do you know what I mean? If anybody has a particular beef with it, that's fine, you let me know. But um, I think we'll just leave it. It kind of gives you the, the the gist of it, whether it's an attack roll or a saving throw, or ranged and close and automatic stuff. There's always automatic spells. Um, I think people will understand that reasonably well, so we'll leave that alone as well. Um, and I did have it un... Yeah, so it's, it's here. That's that slide done. So that's good. Right. So let's... Let's maybe have a look at Mana Pulse and Mana Dice first, and then I'll go back to Rituals. So let's do a quick search <clears throat> on the internet. Mana Pulse. Define. I found this to be quite interesting. Um, so Mana, oh, it's pulled up New Zealand course because mana uh, uh, Zimbabwe as well <laughs> South Africa uh, Africa and yeah yeah I recognize these places um, okay all right this is this is Africa <laughs> okay that's not quite what I was have ha um, um, planning to do let's do this again magic magic mana pulls let's try that again Yeah, no, I believe, yeah, I, I, I do remember there, there being it um, in the early game. Um, when an effect creates mana, when an effect creates mana, that mana goes into a player's mana pool. From there, it can be used to pay for spells and abilities. Mana can only be used once. When mana is used to cast a spell, it is removed from the mana pool, no longer available to the player to use. But there is, of course, a way of regenerating mana. So that is probably the best definition that I could, um, that we could get, is that one right there. And oh, I see. I didn't. Rem I, oh, this is mag is this Magic the Gathering or something? Yeah, it is Magic the Gathering, because they use mana, don't they? Um, so let's do that. Let's pull this, and I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. So copy. We'll take it over here. And uh, get rid of the formatting. Okay. Okay, mana pulls. Um, and I think... I will get rid of this as well. None. Okay. Okay, so um, I guess the first thing to say is So mana pools are a um, finite resource Come on, can I get finite resource in there? Yeah, I can now. R A R A finite resource that um, that can be used for a range of um, magic. Okay, so when an effect creates mana, that mana goes into to the player player characters characters mana pull. Okay, come on, Fred, get that out of there. Um, okay. So mana or mana points 
can be used to pay for spells and abilities. That is the, the general gist of how mana pulls work. Okay, mana can only be used once when mana is used to cast a spell it is removed from the mana pool, no longer available to the player character to use. Okay. Mana uh, pools can be restored um, uh, using a few different methods. So resting. Um, what's the other one? Re Revital, like top of the hour, Spirit Wolf. Two minutes and it'll be top of the hour. I've got two more minutes and it's top of the hour. Magic the Gathering, um, bla um, Blaster Packs, lots of lands for mana and spells that grew with the number of lands you could tap and freed the spell. Ah, I see. I'm not really trying to duplicate Magic the Gathering. I'm just trying to think back to how you would you would get back mana. Um, so mana pulls can be restored by using a few different methods. Resting is the most common way to get and to restore your mana pull so you can then use your spells and your magic abilities. Um, what's the other one? The... Um, oh, uh, meditation that's right it's not so much resting it's it's a it's a bit more than that so med uh, med uh, meditation meditation um and um uh, is it drinking or bathing in a mana In a in a physical, it's kind of like um, I guess the Fountain of Life is a good example. I, I, if you've watched the old Tron movie, they have like a pool that they drink from, and that sort of revitalizes them. And it kind of that's kind of what we're talking about here: um, drinking or bathing in a magical uh, mana. Um, is it water, a liquid pool. That's probably the most common ways to get get it back. Uh, regeneration of oh, potions. Yes, you're right. I had forgotten potions were one of those things, right? Regeneration um, potions. Um, Let's be specific. Mana regeneration potions. Uh, magical fruit. Oh, good. That's right. This is why I need you guys here. So you can fill in all the gaps that I forget. Yeah, it's, 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 just, it's just a way to use it. RuneScape. What do you got here? Fred? RuneScape has essentially mana and you can get potions to refill it. So I think we've covered all of the ways to restore mana. We've explained what mana pulls are, how they work. And now mana dice is really, it's very, very similar. But I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this easily because it's going to pull up Magic the Gathering's um, Wizards of the Coast thing again, isn't it? Mana dice. Um, what is the best way to, to word this? Magic mana dice define. Um, this, this is magic together again. No, no, no. Uh, geez. So this is this is the awkward bit. Dice are just another point system, really. I mean, that's really what it is. So, uh, mana dice can replace mana points. 
but essentially essentially it works the same way uh, there we go I think that I think that sort of nailed it down hopefully drinking the blood of a magical monster <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. Uh, let's put it in. Let's let's uh, let's add that little sucker in. So these are the most common: resting meditation, mana regeneration potions, eating magical fruit. Um, I'll put that last one: drinking or bathing in a physical magical mana liquid pool. Uh, drinking magical blood okay I think that's that's good oh mana and Diablo defined I hadn't thought about that okay thank you thank you Fred mana and Diablo defined mana and Diablo Diablo defined Okay, what do we got here? Mana energy source. I see. Is the recurring secondary character resource which, like, which, unlike life, reflects the amount of energy that a character has. It is used to for casting spells or applying abilities, draining mount mana with um, every cast. The more powerful the spells, the more consuming the mana. Okay. So that's energy is a character attribute to determine how much mana a character has, the higher the energy attribute, the more mana points. So that's mana point system. I think the dice idea is, is still there. I did I did mention I did mention um, uh, mana points, not just mana, so it's it's there. So, yeah, I, I don't know that it's going to add anything. I, I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that entry. I, I think it does what it needed to do. So, uh, well, I guess what's the best way to describe mana? You, I mean, often mana are represented by just rolling a six-sided dice. And, we, and whatever you roll on, and how many you might roll multiple dice when you use your mana. You know, you're casting a certain number. And what you score on your dice... Um, is actually, yeah, okay, so maybe I need to state that. I didn't really specify that, did I? Yeah, I, I, I see what you mean. Um, let me just see if I need to reword this. You, you've made up a good point. I'm just, uh, you've just spelled out the point that I haven't actually described what mana dice and how they would look. Um, um, a number of dice are rolled from your mana dice available to uh, create magic or cast spells and the uh, numerical result uh, determines success, failure, and possibly the um, the what? Resulting effect effects. Is that is that clearer? So mana dice can replace mana points, but essentially it works the same way, and all the other stuff sort of very much works. Number of so you may have one. You might be using six sided dice. You might be using eight sided dice. It really determines de depends. And um, when you roll those dice, so your spell might require you to roll uh, two of those dice to cast that spell. Or three dice to cast that spell 
And it's not just the number of dice you get to roll because what's important is the numerical result. And when you roll those dice, you would add up those numbers and that determines your success or failure. And there would be a, a like a target number or a DC, a difficulty class that you would have to hit. Um, and then you get an, a, a result there. So that is... That is mana dice. I think we've got that down. Yeah, no, I, I think I think I think you've help, helped a lot because once I saw that in Diablo, I realised I hadn't I hadn't talked about rolling the dice and what the effect of the dice is, and all it needed to do was write a sentence. So it's now there. Okay. Sorry about that, people. All right, we've got that down though. Now, um, now that we've done. The, uh, mana pulls. So if you haven't figured it out, I'm doing all the interesting stuff and leaving the boring stuff to last. But I'm going to ask you a question about um, elemental magic. Um, so, um, hashtag, how have you seen Elemental magic used in a role playing game. Uh, so, also, too, before I, I forget. We're going to roll around and at some point I'm going to present you with Avatar 5e. Somebody made uh, Avatar 5e, so I'm going to present Avatar 5e on my channel at some point. I don't know, I'm not going to promise when, but it will happen, okay? Uh, I'm going to go take a short five minute break, come back, and then we're going to do Elemental Magic, and uh, that uh, that'll, that will hopefully uh, move us on a bit further, get us closer to where we need to be. Sound all right? Hopefully it does. All right, five minutes or less and I'm back. Coming back into here. All right, let's see. Uh, yes.
All right, so let's have a look and see how people are going with the uh, with the comments. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, all right, so what has Fred got here? Average on the uh, material plane. Earth spells are stronger on the earth plane, weaker on the plane of on the plane of air. Oh, I see. Yep, fire and water don't affect earth magic much. And similar to each of the traditional traditional four elements opposed in oppositions versus other planes. Makes planet travel fun when spells are cast at different Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Alright, okay. So um So we're gonna define a little bit of the aspects of elemental magic, which you, you most of you are probably thinking, Fred, it's do you even need to bother? We we, we can figure that out. And I, I totally get it. <laughs> I totally understand that. Um so what I want to do is, oh, actually I didn't do this, did I? Uh, mana pools are finite. So let's do mana pools. Okay. What are mana pools? What are mana pools? Question mark. Um, and what are uh, mana dice? So that needs to be there need to go down sorry about this people I should have done this before okay okay um, so this is using mana or mana points Uh, what else was there I needed to put in here using mana points um, um, so mana is drained whoops is drained drained or expended I guess Move you across just a little bit. Here we go. Expended. Uh, are restoring mana. Okay, yes, we didn't put that in there, so let's put that now. Restoring mana. How to rest uh, restore mana. Uh, that's fine. I got that bit there. What else did I, did I miss anything? Spells and abilities. Um, using mana. Okay. So this is that one. That is that one. Affecting mana that goes into a pool. Okay, all right. Uh, no, I kind of feel like that, that works under that already. Do I need to put another one in there? Do I? No, I don't really think I do need to do that actually. Um, okay, so how to use mana dice? Mana dice, and uh, that ought to be about right. So let's just go like this. Expand you, shuffle you over a little bit. That'll do. Okay, so we've got that nailed down. Let's uh, let's move on. Let's go over back to the Google document, uh, and uh, let's deal with elemental magic. Sorry, <clears throat> just going to make sure I keep both documents up to date. A little bit of homework taking place here, so I apologise for that. Oh, something I didn't mention about mana dice is, if you have like an ability or a spell that requires a certain number of dice to be used, so maybe you have to use three dice to cast, say, Fireball, for example, you could add additional dice from your mana pool to have a better chance of being effective with your 
your magic. Um, that's often a concept that round mana dice. So, okay. Uh, what do you got here? A plane of energy, wizards, spell slots, mana pulls, fills faster, but negative energy. Okay. I'm not quite, I'm trying to track what you're trying to say to me, but it's a little bit, a bit hard to keep up with. Let's get into elemental magic. Define elemental magic. All right, so let's do that. Um, an elemental is a mythic being that is described in ocular. No, that's not what we're after. What is magic element? What? What are the eight magic elements? Eight? Oh, interesting. And it hadn't even occurred to me. This is um, the eight elements magic system. True mask games. I didn't realize that they had uh, they had put something together for that. Much to my surprise, didn't realize that was there. <laughs> um, but apparently, yes, it is there. Hmm. It's not quite the uh, the direction I was going. So they have added. So they've got air, fire, water, earth, which are very common. Darkness, okay. Light, metal, and nature. Yeah, I don't really like it. <laughs> okay, so let's see if I can. Okay, that's that's really what we wanted is the ability to use elemental forces through magic. That's that's all I needed to have. That's what I was trying to pull out. I was pretty sure somebody would have written it down. So let's uh, just drop it in here. Um. The ability to use elemental forces um, through magic. Now, is that really what we're saying here? The ability to use elemental forces to create magic and spells. Yeah, I think that's better. That's probably more what we're after. So let's grab this one here and go like that. All right. Define elemental magic. Okay. Fandom commands. Oh, this is, this is somebody's book of uh, magical spells here. Witchcraft. We, I've wound up with witchcraft stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Define ear. I think that's what we'll do. Define ear. Do that instead. Sorry about this, people. Um, the last ear bender. The bender is um, tapping elemental ear energy and using the energy to do things with ear. So, let's do this. The element of ear. is harnessed or tapped into two manipulate ear in the environment. 
So that's the real difference between elemental magic and some of the other magic that you're used to, is that you're you're using the the element to manipulate it in some way. Um, so air might be used to make you fly, or air might be used to um, create a, a gust of wind that you can push. You can affect the weather with air. Do you know what I mean? You can push things around with air. So it's it's that sort of concept. You could probably use air, the element of air, to actually allow you to breathe underwater. Um, those are sort of more that's more elemental sort of stuff. So. And I guess the same, the easiest way to describe this is each one is kind of doing exactly that. So the, the description is actually almost identical in each one. Um, although with some of it, it's going to be different. But yeah, well, so I'll just do this and paste. And this is fire. I might have to make some changes here. We'll do this quickly though. Fire. And we'll do the same thing for water. It's not going to be saying the same thing because unfortunately the elements do do things slightly differently. So water, water, and we need some examples too because it's not going to be enough to just do this. Paste earth. Earth. Uh, for those of you who are curious as to what the heck I'm up to, this is more supposed to be generic about magic in general. Okay, it's more an it's more a uh, thought process than anything else. Um, if you are looking for me to be making a role playing game, that's happening tomorrow. We'll go back to uh, I am I am making a role playing game. Um, or is, am I cloning it, replicating it? Um, yeah, <laughs> reverse engineering it, something like that. Just call it whatever you like. So this is, we're almost there, and we'll put this all in. Paste. Spirit. 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 It's Hannah. Uh, now, that's not going to be worded that way at all because it just doesn't make sense. So let's first give you some examples of how this works and then I'll change these, some of these sentences. So the element of air is harnessed or tapped into to manipulate air in the environment. Um, this can be to um, fly, um, um, uh, create wind, uh, breathe air underwater. Is there any more examples people can think of with regard to air? You let me know. Um, and uh, <laughs> um, uh, generate generate storms really that's what we're dealing with there is that aspect of it fire bolt shooting a little ball of elemental fire which can do damage like a candle um, trapping energy yeah so let's do the next one um, the element of fire is is harnessed or tapped into to manipulate fire in the environment uh, so this what this is uh, I'm going to use the same wording every single time I'll just put world we'll use a different world different word world uh, okay so what are we trying to do here so fire is um, what's the best way um, Affecting the element 
of fire might uh, what's the best way it might generate fire so generating fire um, forming a firewall um, hurling fireballs very very common um, lighting a candle a candle well it's really generating fire so we don't have to say that again uh, what else is there that is what else is around fire that would be around elemental stuff I'm trying to ugh. um yeah this is a little bit harder because fire always feels destructive right um, oh generate you know, put no. extinguishing 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 fire so we're actually removing it from the environment so those are that's sort of what fire would be doing okay the element of water is um, uh, so now water water effects in terms of water magic look like what water magic So water magic is um, is um, is like what are we doing here? Like um, freezing, freezing water to ice. Um, Oh, I see. Yeah, that's a good point. Let's do that. I agree. I'm going to drag it straight from uh, chat, though. Fred. You make a good point. Let's do that. Okay. All elemental magic taps the source of elemental energy to affect nearby items creatures or the environment so I can now kind of um, I can get rid of some of this repetitive stuff so elemental magic taps um, uh, magic harnesses yeah that's it. it taps the source okay so That's better. The element of air can be to fly. Much, much better. Uh, effects. Okay, the element of fire affects. Um, Right, generate fire da, da, da. so we've got that that's fine cool thank you I'd appreciate that um, Fred nice addition how am I doing for time we're doing all right okay the element of water is harnessed tapped no so we don't want to start that way we want to go um, the element of water Um, modifies, modifies 
What a fuss. Element. Uh, freezing water to ice. What was the other one? Um, for the life of me, I'm trying to think what water does. I'll oh, create water. Thank you, Fred. Um, um, uh, we have a bit more complexity set of elements than the uh, the traditional four. Uh, yeah, I, I'm 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 looking at five rather than going just four. I don't want to go eight. I'm not going to do eight because eight. I just don't feel like darkness and light are actually elements. I feel like they are. They, it sounds like nonsense to me. Um, I'm, but then again, when it comes to elemental magic, I'm more. I guess I'm a bit more traditional. I guess in my my thoughts. Hello, Paul. How are you doing? Shroud of fog, mist. Ah, yes. Um, uh, form mist. What was the other one? Uh, somebody said to control water. Um, shape water. Shape water. Or control it. And what's the other one? There's a... Oh, jeez. Um, I'm putting etc. I'm I'm a little bit lost with what to put here. I'm just trying to think. <laughs> um, okay, so that's here. We go. So that's that's fine. That's good. Yeah, we could go endlessly, but I don't think we need to do that. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's not. Uh, it's not. It's not elemental magic, and that's it. So yeah, we're just. It's a taste. Okay, <laughs> let's just stick with. It's a taste. The, the element of earth is is um, it's not so. Is it transforming? Is Transforming and shifting stone, dirt, and sand. Um, this might include. Um, Building a uh, an earth wall or earth call. Come on, earth wall. Uh, what else was there? Earth, earth, earth. Ah, uh, digging holes. Digging holes. Um. Summoning earth elementals. I didn't actually put that in with the other ones, did I? That uh, summoning is definitely part of that aspect. So, summoning water. Brain dump. Hit the reset button. That's exactly what I, what I was. Yeah, I am having. To, I'm having a bit of a brain dump it here. The problem is when you start throwing things out there, there's sort of a freezing point, and I've uh, <laughs> I've had a freezing point, obviously. Summoning fire elemental. 
Uh, what else did I have here? And come on, something here. Elementals. Okay. So, is there anything else I wanted to put in here? Oh, I'm, I almost feel like healing is always falling underwater, but to explain it in here is too hard. It's way too difficult. So I don't think I'm going to try to explain it. It, just, it isn't going to work. Um, short of saying, yeah, most creatures would be made up of mostly water, so therefore they would need water to reconstitute themselves if they are injured. I suppose you could say it like that, but there's other things going on as well. So you would have to manipulate multiple elements to actually do any kind of healing. And I, I almost feel like in some respects we're almost falling under spirit. Um, so yeah, let's we'll leave that. We'll leave that as a, a big hole of, of problems. Um, digging holes, something with elementals. I don't know what else to put under earth. I, I'm lost. Void. Yeah, I have a void brain right now. Can add more later. Yeah, exactly. I can add, add more later. Plane of life. Yeah, so we'll leave that. Let's go on to the um, the element of, of spirit because we'll run out of time. I've got just under 20 minutes or just over 20 minutes. Well, probably less than that. Um, so the, the element of spirit, the thing with the element of spirit is one of those things, unlike fire, air, water, and earth, you can't transform, modify, um, harness or trap it. It's more a negotiation, I think. So the, the element of spirit is, is communicating. Uh, cooperatively, co cooperatively, with souls and um, what's the other and the ethereal aspect of the world and creatures um, so oh tremors and earthquakes Paul that's a good point yes you're right thank you for that um, earthquakes Why didn't I not think of that? A brain freeze, that's what it was. So, so would it, how do I word this? Um, the element of spirit would... Um, Allow communication with the um, with the dead. So that's like you speak with dead, I guess. Um, and then what else we're we dealing with here? Astral project projection, astral projection. Um, and healing. Uh, what else is there here? This is this is I'm just trying to think in terms of the spirit, the element of spirit and what that falls under. Hard to actually define exactly.
little little tricky I have to say just a tiny bit tricky that one I'll let you guys think about that for a second while I put some water in me. <clears throat> and, uh scratch my head. No, the hat's got to go. I can't take it. It's too much. It's too warm. It's just too hot. Okay, so I, I am a little stuck as what else I'm supposed to say about the spirit. So define spirit. Life force. Yeah, I know, I know what it is. It's just... When it comes to using elemental magic, what are we what are we trying what are we usually doing? And I for the life of me Spirit. Define spirit. Um Oh of course oh that was oh, so obvious. Why didn't I not um Restoring life Restoring life. Really obvious. I knew there was something. Emotions. 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 Yeah. Again, I'd put a question mark. I'm not too short to do that. I was I was like, there's there's something. I know I haven't put it down. And then restoring life, I was like, ah. Oh. Um. And I think the element of spirit is also probably necromancy. Okay, so restoring life is one thing, but there's different ways of doing that, and one would be calling back the original spirit to its body, or restoring um, restoring it uh, to a new body, but I guess the other aspect is calling on the spirits, or calling on the um, 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 demons and devils to take over a body, and that's really what, um, you know, what exists within a zombie or a, a skeleton, is it's it's basically a an evil in an evil spirit that's uh, now residing within it. So it's I guess necromancy does fall into that. Time, time, changing time. You're right. Thank you. Changing time, gaining insight. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to word this. Gaining insight, it's not going to be enough, Paul. I know there's more to it than that. I know I have to... I, mean, I haven't really explained very well changing time. How the hell is spirit involved in changing time? But it's perspective, isn't it? So that, that's sort of part of the, part of it. So oh, ugh, this, is, this, is the, this, is the, this is the hardest one. I have to say, this will be the hardest one. Um, necromancy. So it wouldn't be just communicating with, oh, um, summoning. Summoning would be a, an aspect, right? Summoning. Summoning. Oh. I'm going to put that last because it's going to be more complicated. Summoning. Summoning um, angels. Demons and devils. I think that covers it. Sort of. Hi, Brian. You like time? Or a lower plane or a life form? I've always had a problem with all skeletons having evil spirits. Uh, level 1 wizard can call a good neutral evil spirit for a familiar. Why not the animate dead? <laughs> yeah. Right, so that is that aspect of it, and it's it's chewed up a lot of time do, doing that. I have to say. So let's uh, let's have a look here. What is elemental magic? Elemental magic. That's our first question. Um. um How does this ear I 
Okay. Work. I guess that's the easiest way to say it. I guess that's the, yeah. So this is really, I just got to do this right down here. Really, there's not much else to it. It's pretty simple. Um, okay. How does fire magic work? Okay, so that's that. Uh, um, I don't even want to do that. How does I'm just going to put ear magic? That's what I'll do. Let's do this ear elemental magic. Magic. That's all I want. That's what I just three words is more than adequate for what I'm trying to communicate there. So that's what I'll put. Sorry, people. Just a little bit of uh, tinkering around to get this right. Fire and it'll work. Until magic. Uh, dope. That's that one. Water, elemental magic. Magic and Earth Elemental Magic and oh come on Magic and what else? How's it? Good? What do you got here, Spirit Wolf? Because divine good or evil, magic of uh, Xanth series they have good skeletons and zombies. Oh okay. Uh, magical energy reinforced by elements. Um, if if you look, D D calls healing spells necromancy. Yeah, it does. Primordial, primordial energy. Um, so so Fred, I actually wasn't I wasn't suggesting that you couldn't have a a good spirit uh, drawn into a skeleton or a zombie. It may not want to do that though. <laughs> um. Because again, I think there is always going to be a aspect to it that is a, a, a conversation of an agreement of some kind. Harnessing magical energy. Uh, do I need to say that? No, I don't. That's that's really all that needs to be in that that slide. So that's what I'll do, and we'll just pucker that out a little bit. Pucker it maybe a bit more. And I'll just make it as large as I possibly can. So it's nice and clear. No, that's too much. <laughs> and grab it and drag it down. Okay, cool. All right, so. Okay, I've made a final decision about concentration mechanics. What I will do is I will leave the concentration mechanics slide in. And instead what I will do is I will stipulate that this is 5e. Because this is 5e's mechanic. Okay, that they've got here, um, and really that's what we're communicating here in this first place. So, um, so dungeons and dragons, five e. All right. Let's uh, grab, is that all of it? Is that everything? It is. It's too big now, so I've got to shrink it a little bit more. Is it close enough? Okay, so we'll switch over to the other side. Go back, 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 back. Okay, so. So dungeons and Dragons 5e uh, uses a concentration tration check. Um, see below. Now, I cannot remember if some of the other versions of D&D used a concentration check for magic. It probably was. It was probably um, done done differently. That's that's the only thing I can think of. 
Um, and I'm not really sure how to approach that, but I'll leave it in. I'll leave that in. There are other ways of doing it. Concentration checks don't have to look like that. They can look in a different way, but there's a gazillion different ways you can do it. So <clears throat> I guess the other thing to say is um, concentration mechanics for spell casting and magic can be uh, achieved many different ways. I don't I couldn't possibly cover them all. I'm gonna put a question mark there because it doesn't really give you very much other than guess what? There's a lots of different ways of doing it. It's not it's not a great way to not a great way to structure or something, but um yeah, okay. So um oh here we are rituals and I am I'm out of time held a sunbeam light spell to ride out and he's caught some um, soldiers back to his inside the walls effective demonstration of concentration yes it is very much so you're right so rituals i don't know given the ritual stuff that i've written down here i'm, I'm pretty happy with what we've got what i don't want to do is do i necessarily want to say I, okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I am taking that bit. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to put that first. I'm going to paste it. Bring it up. Um, I'm going to leave these. I am still undecided whether I am happy with leaving that that way. I know that's weird. Um, and I don't necessarily want to do that either because that's that's a 5e sort of thing so I, I know what I'm going to do even though I talk about it I'm not necessarily going to put it in the slide what I will do is I will take this I will unhighlight it I will remove it completely and I'm going to leave this for me to figure out another time because which will probably not happen in a live stream. I will probably, I'll probably be sitting on the toilet, uh, doing my business, and it'll come to me, and I'm like, okay, that's how I do it. Um, it sounds weird, but often that's how it works for me. <laughs> it's like, ah, that's how I'm supposed to communicate it. That's the way I should do it. Um, I can't say other than, you know, I do my best thinking um, on the on the potty. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, dear let me let me get us out of here so i can go to work because um i should you're going to see me tomorrow uh returning to making a role-playing game which is basically cloning or re-engineering re or um what else do you call it replicating somebody else's role-playing game but without hopefully breaking any copyrights and i don't want to use ogl anything i don't want to use creative commons nothing i just want to just make it and then put it out there and say do whatever you want with it but i want it to make i want to make it the way i think it should have been made in the first place i don't know if anybody will agree with that but that's where my head is at so let me just end this poll that we had uh, do you like fancy magic in your role-playing games so we've had a few people had time had time to actually vote on that um, do you like fancy magic in your role-playing games so just watching 47 percent. so most people didn't want to comment on that which is fine Yes, 21%. Undecided, 17%. No, 13%. Okay. Out of 23 votes. All right. So we have done pretty well. I, I feel like this was a, a good sort of polling of ideas. I feel like this one is mostly done. Um, I don't know that I'll necessarily, in a month's time, run it as such. Will I go over a different role, um, game system rather than talk about magic in general in the future? I probably will talk about magic in general in the future, but as a presentation, maybe not with the slides straight away. But I will cover a, a role-playing game system's magic. 
okay? I, I, I think that's it's time to do that. I think it's definitely, we're at that point where I'm happy to do that now. Um, next week, we'll be going back to the basic game mechanics. I don't believe there's very much to do with that one. So there's three more that I probably will go over. That's basic game mechanics, uh, followed by uh, basic combat and complex combat mechanics. So there's three more over the next three weeks, and then we will be going into hopefully what will become the new um, tabletop role-playing game rules uh, program that I run on my channel. We'll see how that goes. I'm hoping it works out well. I'm all right. Uh, but anyway, um, I want to say a big thank you to all of my patrons who support me on Patreon. I really do appreciate it. It makes a big difference, and, um, and thank you for doing so. And you'll find all of the stuff that I wind up developing here will go on to Patreon and a document in, in some way. It's only a matter of time. Uh, I want to thank everybody who took part in the poll today on the live stream. Uh, it was in the chat. Particularly, I want to thank um, Fred Hubber. Uh, you have uh, generated more than a few ideas today and helped me move things along. Big thank you, too, to Spirit Wolf as well. And uh, we also had um, Brian in here and Paul who were trying to share their ideas as well to keep me moving so that I didn't freeze up in the middle of the live stream. Thank you. And if you just watch the live stream or the replay, thank you too. I do appreciate it. It's a, it's a big deal. Um, and um, look, wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, okay, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbors. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.